Again, my name is Simon. So I, I throw this up here every time and, and I'm very much a, a rules-based trader. I, I, I have the rules based on my system. I follow my rules. I stick to them. I do what the system says. And that the rules for my systems are from start to finish. I don't buy unless the system sell, uh, says so. I don't sell until the system says so. Uh, the rules position my stop losses. Absolutely everything is there. The problem is as human beings, mostly we struggle with rules. We, not that we don't like the concept and the idea. We just find it hard to really adhere to them as much as we need to. The other extreme is a completely uh, you know, unrules based where basically you look at a market uh, and either just toss a coin or make a decision, take a position and see how it goes. Um, and that doesn't make us feel terribly comfortable either. We kind of want something in the middle. And this evening really comes into that something in the middle where there's bits of rules around it, particularly on the risk side. Uh, and I'm not going to delve too deep into that because there's presentations on it. The links will be up in a moment. Um, but where it does give us a little more, I suppose, subjectivity is by looking at that chart. And the huge risk of that, of course, um, and, and I did this experiment once and I was going to redo it again this evening, but the, practically, if I gave everyone in this room the same chart and said, draw me support and resistance lines, I'm going to get different lines from everyone. And that's not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing because it, it, you know, it's what a market is. A market is made up of different people's individual views. If we all had the same view in the market, there wouldn't be a market. If we agreed that NASPAS was worth 2,548 Rand, boom, that's what it would be at. No one would pay more and no one would sell it for less and there wouldn't be a market, there wouldn't be an industry. We want that differentiation of views. Problem is, we can bring bias into it. So if you, if you, are, if you think that, that, that Trump's going to win the election and the world is going to end, when I show you a chart of the S&P 500, you will draw trend lines and support lines that support your view. And that's not, even, that's not a conscious thing and it's just human nature. We, we obviously, what we believe informs what we think going forward. And if you believe something, it's incredibly difficult for us to now say, we're going to abandon it. We're going to walk away from that process and we're, going to, you know, we, we're not going to let it into our thinking. In truth, we can't not let it in. You know, once it's in your head, it's in your head. You can't go and delete that. It's not like a hard drive where you can, can delete bits. So it's always going to be there. So as soon as we are looking at, at, at what I call clean charts and, and putting our own view onto it, we run into all those risks. And, and they, they're real. And there's some tricks to them and we'll talk around them this evening. There's some understandings on, 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 around it and we'll talk around that this evening as well. The, the biggest thing, as always is the case, is, is just huge amounts of practice. And in many senses, the best way to look at charts is to not to know what they are a chart of. Practically, that's not, hard, not, not possible. You, know, you, you log on to a system, you have to call up a chart and, and then view it. But if we could find a way where, where our system said to us, here's a chart, but you, and you don't know what it is. In other words, you have no bias towards it. And, and I've got some here. Um, and and you know, we, don't, we have absolutely no idea what the chart is of. Now we can start drawing lines properly and cleanly without any cognitive bias. The way we practice is we don't practice on SA40 stocks. No, 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 no. We go and practice on Singapore companies. Why Singapore? First company, the first country that came to mind. In other words, go and find a market which you know nothing about and go and find charts of which you know nothing about the companies and practice on those. So they'd be practicing in an environment of complete bias being, 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 being moved out of the process. So, I mean, pick a market, whatever it is, DAX, Kakaron, Singapore, ASX, Sweden, whatever. Pick a market that isn't your home market that you don't know about and go practice on, on the individual stocks within that. What then happens <clears throat> is you're practicing in an environment where you are devoid of any bias towards these charts, which really, really works. Then when you pull up a chart of what you do recognize, Bulletin, NASPAS, Sassel, First Rand, Aspen, whatever the case may be, you will feel the bias. And, and it sounds completely weird, but trust me on this. When you, when you start drawing your trend lines on the top 40, you will feel the difference around that bias coming in. And now you know where to, where to in a sense, squash it. You know where to say, hang on a moment, I can feel that as bias. Let me pull it out of the process because you've practiced in a space which is clean and free in a, in a sense. And I know it sounds completely wacky, but trust me, it really, really works. And the beauty is, is that these days we can do it. Back in the day when I was trying to do this in the, in the, in the, in the late 1990s, um, getting charts for other markets was completely and absolutely impossible. So what we used to do, my friend and I used to grab screenshots. So he lived in Somerset West. I was up in, in, in those days, I was in Burtis Hill, Durban. Um, we used to grab screenshots of random charts 
just random charts from random periods, but you never had the date at the bottom, you never had the price on the side, and you never knew what the chart was. So every, every Sunday we would prepare 50 charts for each of us, send them to each other, and we would just draw trend lines on them and stuff. And we never compared notes. It wasn't about being right or wrong. It was about learning how to draw the lines and where to put them. These days it's easier. As I said, you just go to the... I mean, I'm assuming Singapore has a stock exchange. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, in fact, yes, I know that, because someone in Durban the other week was telling me how they trade the Singapore one, and I, f and I forget why, but part of it is no bias, no emotion. You know, we are busy trading our SA40 here, and what are we doing? We've got half an eye on, on the Constitutional Court, we've got half an eye on NASPAS, we've got half an eye on this, we've got half an eye on Parliament, and, half, and you're trading Singapore, I mean, what do you watch? Price. I mean, we don't even, I mean, I mean, they have politicians in Singapore, right? And there's one thing we know about politicians, they all shouldn't be allowed anywhere near power, but uh, we, we, we don't get those cognitive biases coming in. So trend lines in themselves, obviously they work across any time frame, as is always the case. As you shrink your time frame and you move from daily charts to hourly or, or 30 minute, 15 minute, 5 minute, 1 minute, etc., etc., um, your reliability becomes smaller. Uh, as you move out, a, a, a weekly chart is much more reliable. A MACD crossover on a weekly is a much more reliable statement than a MACD crossover on a daily and, and so on and so on. Um, but obviously they're going to work across time frames. As I said, your real risk is that bias. We can bring an indicator in to try and help remove that bias. So for example, you bring in a simple MACD, maybe an RSI. Firstly, don't bring in too many. Bring in one, be it, and, and, and I would, if, if, if we are voting, my vote would be for MACD. I like the concept, I like how it works. Uh, it's fairly simple, just use standard conditions. Don't go and say instead of 26, you want to use 27.52. No, no, just use standard d definitions. Understand what an indicator is doing. If we take as the only truth we have in the market is price, right? Price. Something went up. That is true. Someone is buying at 100 Rand. That is true. Why did it go up is opinion. Where it goes next is opinion. And how it got there is opinion. The truth is the price. If we take that as the only truth in the market, as soon as we go to an indicator or an oscillator, we're actually moving away from price. Because we take price, we run it through a formula, we end up here. We're actually further away from the only truth that we have. Trend lines, interestingly, are right at that cutting edge. Of course, between that price, the chart, and the trend line is me, you, and the individual, which is our risk. So if you want to bring one in, pick one. Um, yeah, as I said, if you're voting on it, mine would be the MACD. I've got some examples. Uh, watch out for steep trend lines. I'll show you that in uh, some moment. And, and avoid overuse. And I've got an example of that. You know, if, if, if you need more than three trend lines to support your theory on the chart, you're fitting it in. Two, three, is, and frankly, you want two, right? Support. Resistance. That's it. Those are the two. If you want a third one, yeah, okay, you could say there's big trend and small trend, primary and secondary trend, so that could justify a third. If you need a chart with seven, eight, nine trend lines on it, you're, you're, you're trying to find a story. You've come into it and said, I need to buy that thing, therefore I'm going to put those trend lines until I can prove that it's worth buying. Um, so avoid that overuse. <coughs> what is critically important is the more touch points, the stronger it is. In other words, if you've got a trend line that only touches the price once, you don't have a trend line. If it touches the price twice, you have a trend line and it's nice, but if you've got three touches, it's stronger still. So you want more touch points to it. Typically, that obviously then includes longer durations, that's fine, but you certainly want those more touch points coming through. You don't want just two touch points, and, and there's exceptions to it, and I've got some examples of that as well. To me, three is my ideal. Um, three touches, and now I've got something that is absolutely real to it. Um, and you buy bullish and you sell bearish. So if you've got bullish trend lines, and I'll show you examples in a moment, you buy off the support, and if you've got bearish, you set off resistance. I know what we all want to do, we want to, we want to call the turn, we want to call the bottom, we want to call the top, we want to be the person who stands up and says, NASPAS will never be 2,000 Rand again in the history of our life, and we get in the front page of, do people even look at front pages anymore? <laughs> we, we, we get on the internet, we become a meme on Twitter or something like that. Um, but in truth, markets are about trends, and really, those trends continue for long periods of time. Uh, just take our top 40. Right, so 
Uh, let's go all the way back to the crash of 87. The crash of 87, we rallied for up until 94, weakness. We rallied until 98, emerging market crisis, uh, where we saw the weakness. We weren't too badly hit by 9-11, by more we were hit by, by the currency pullback. Um, rallied up to 2008, and, and, and crisis. Now we rallied up until March of 2014, and now we've been going sideways. Look at individual stocks, look at Capitex, look at Kumba, look at Naspas, look at the stocks. Trends tend to continue. If you're trading in the direction of the trend, you're going to be right more times than not. If you're trying to trade against the trend, you're going to be wrong almost every time. Most times, stock, you know, and again, I appreciate time frames matter. You know, trends in a one-minute chart is different from trends in a daily or weekly or monthly chart. The point being is that trends continue. And it's why, you know, as a trading strategy, notwithstanding I'm a mechanical trader, as a trading strategy, I trade trends. Not interested in breakouts, reversals, yes, reversals are great, they can be useful in, in times. Reversals, particularly, are going to work if you're day trading indices in short time frames. So the webcast we did, uh, which would have been two months ago, which is back in September, we looked at reversal patterns. Uh, the, seven, uh, the engulfing candle in particular works incredibly well in a 15 or 30 minute chart um, on an index. That works lacquer. <coughs> Best fit. In other words, you know, and I've been down this road before, where you're trying to zoom in and you want that trend line to exactly touch the top pixel of, no, nah, I mean, you know what, it's, it's, it's a zone. It's not a, this is not something where you, want, you, you need to zoom in and be absolutely 100% specific. The best fit, and I'll touch on that as well. And if you are looking at a longer term, so the question is, do you do candles or do you do closes? And if you do candles, where do you draw it? Do you draw it in the wick, top of the wick, halfway down, close? Where are you putting it on the candles? Um, short answer. If you're doing longer term time frames, longer term, any chart with more than a year's data, just lose closing price. Remember, our brain remembers these things. Eh? Prices aren't critically important. We remember. I remember when NASPAS broke 250. I remember when it broke 1,000 because um, uh, 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 Wayne McCurry had to buy us lunch. I remember when it broke 2,000 because Wayne McCurry bought us lunch again. And when it breaks 3,000, we will have yet more lunch. Um, <laughs> With champagne, of course, because <clears throat> uh, Wayne McCurry hasn't learned that trends are strong things. Um, the thing is, is that we remember, and the market does remember. The market remembers, and I say the market, the individuals. You know, if you've been in the market for some time, you remember when certain things happened at certain prices. I remember when Capitec broke 100, as clear as it was, it's an important number. But oddly enough, I also remember Capitec at 175. Um, because I was selling some because I thought it was crazy expensive uh, and so on and so on. So market does remember. Um, <clears throat> so longer term, go for closing. So let's look at some examples. This is a chart. Uh, what it is is a material, not massively important at all. You can see a couple of things. So let's start at that support line at the top. So there's an obvious place to start your support line is right there. Nice and simple. And then you want to start drawing it across. And if you draw it across those lips there, you shoot off and that it goes absolutely nowhere. Now, we are sitting at this point in the chart and this uh, chart is to the close on Friday, so it's current. Um, it happens to be Indy 25 and I think it's daily, but that's neither here nor there. Um, that there doesn't stress me. You know, folks will say, oh, but, but it's broken through. It doesn't stress me. Prices will break. You know, so in an index, especially so, but even in a stock, and even in a, in a large, highly liquid stock, there's someone who's selling, right? They got a sell order, a large sell order from institution, and their instruction was, sell it, don't go below this price, finish it by today. And they're just selling. They, they don't care anything about anything. So you're going to get overshoots on the upside and on the downside as well. Um, and if we're going to absolutely pixel point it, we, we, we're going to be out of business. So the point, as I said, is it really is about getting it into zones. That is a reasonable zone. Now, we could fudge it and say, you know what, in truth, that line should have been a little lower down because then I would have hit there and I would have hit there and I would have hit there. Fair point. So that's not the best drawn line, but it's in the space. This one again, you know, I've taken that as my first point. Now, this is some retrofitting because I'm basically by doing this saying that where we are right now is a support zone that is broken. And that is not true. It might be true. But my chart, in truth, block that out, has one point. 
this point to my mind is still live. So what I'm saying is you want that line in before the price gets there. If we're drawing the, if we're drawing the line at this point in the equation, are we not fitting it? Are we not bringing our bias? Are we not taking this and saying, ah, look at that, look what's happened. Further to that, don't trade the brakes. Assume support holds, assume resistance will, will, will repel. You will be right more times than not. Yes, there will be exceptions. Yes, maybe the ND is crashing down. I don't know what it's done the first two days of this week. But if your assumption is always support holds, you're in business. And that resistance will, will, will hold, you're going to be in business. Um, a slightly better top line, but again, same line at the bottom. All I've done, and you can see my retrofitting. So on the previous one, I'm saying we have broken. Ah, oh, look at that. Indy's broken. Time to go short. Uh, but I could just place it there and say it's time to go long. <laughs> and really the difference is, yeah, pretty much nothing. This line here is completely useless. That support line that we're sitting on there is completely useless for us. Uh, there's a significantly better support line. <clears throat> uh, I'll come to the, to the resistance at the moment. We've got some nice support there. We're going back a fair bit of time. We can certainly see there and there. We can certainly see hitting it there. And we can see a break of sorts there. But then we've got that there. That there, and I'm trying to, actually, I don't know. This is a daily chart, so we've got 60 candles. I don't know where that is. Notwithstanding, that's the kangaroo tail and a buy signal, if you came to the reverse, uh, reversal patterns, as is that down there. Um, are we, what we have right now, just another example of this right here? Short answer, I'll tell you in a couple of weeks. No, I, we don't know. We're, we're, we're retrofitting. Um, that's my preferred line. That is without a shadow of a doubt my preferred line. Lots of time to it. I'm hitting the closes, right? So I'm hitting my closes nicely. Uh, a bit messy here, I can live with that, hitting my closes. That therefore is telling me that this is actually not insignificant. But what do I do with it? In this case, nothing. Why? Because I don't, I, I buy support or I ignore support. I don't short a break of support. I appreciate that things do break support. Of course they do. I'm saying that has it broken support or have I just drawn that line poorly? But what I have got here is two very clear touch points, a third decent enough touch point and then a something happening over there. And that's what I'm talking about, it's a zone. You know, the problem with, with these charts, and let's go back to that one there. So we can now, <clears throat> on your software, it will tell you exactly what that level is. And let's say, let's say it's a stock and not an index. And let's say the level is 112 Rand and 50 cents. And if it goes to 112 Rand and 49 cents, we have broken and let's go short. But markets aren't that binary. The, the, the support is at, is at around 112.50. That might be 115, it might be 110. Because remember, it gets to 112.50, there might be someone there with a large order which they're busy executing to exit. And as soon as they're gone, the big seller's left from the market and they can run again. And, and, and the highly liquid stocks happens, happens a lot more in, in the smaller ones. So what we're looking at more is to say, don't pixel peep from what I, the phrase I use. Don't zoom in and stress it. Rather say, we're looking at a zone of importance. In this case here, that to me, there, which is my preferred line, says to me there was a zone of importance sitting around here and we have certainly breached it. What's happening next? Short answer, not sure. Let's stand back and see. My then critique comes is for me, support and trend lines, I like them almost as parallel as possible. Not, sorry, horizontal, parallel to each other. I like them horizontal lines. They don't have to be exactly so, but that is a steep line. And I'm going to show you some examples in a moment of, of how we can take the steep lines to an absolute extreme. But to me, I want those sort of more or less horizontal lines. Why? Because as I said to you a moment ago, markets or traders and investors remember numbers. I remember when Capitec gets back to 175 one day, uh, if it ever does, I'm going to remember. It's going to trigger things in my brain. Mostly it's going to trigger regret of selling at 175. So if we've got them more, more horizontal and parallel to each other, we get a much better picture from it. So there's what I'm saying about my two steep. 
So this was a chart that was on Twitter, rushing around on Twitter last week. Uh, I'm not convinced by the line, but let's, let's grant it. And what have we got? A lovely break. This is brilliant. We've got to go and buy the stock, uh, except that's what happens over your next four days. It just goes down again. But no, no, not to be deterred. Look what we have now. Ha <laughs> ha, you thought you had me. Look what I got. Another buy signal on the same stock. And uh, guess what happened? That is actually the big picture. That is the big picture. So here what we've got is a nice two touches, third break. What have we got? We've cut, uh, what we call a kiss goodbye. In other words, it broke it. What do you do? Nothing. But it then tried to hold it and then it failed. So your entry, if anything, is somewhere on probably the, what, one of those candles, probably that one. I would have put my, and let me do it on here so the folks in the webcast can see it, at the break point, on that nice run down, and then the, the move higher, I would have said, close below that candle, and I'm interested in a short. And this is where we can bring our MACD into the equation and say, has the MACD histogram turned down? If the MACD histograms turned down, we've got a clear break, we've got it coming back, and now we've got it falling. And if you look at this picture, you're not buying that green candle or that green candle. I mean, you're grasping at straws. But, I mean, those don't look uncompelling. Uh, they, they, uh, these are daily. These are all daily. So in this case, I mean, what we're looking at here, and this, so the, the person who, who, who tweets these, and I, I didn't pull their name out because that's not fair. I'm not, I'm not dumping on an individual. Um, the person who, who, who tweets these, if you go look at their timeline, this is how they trade, and they actually do a right. They, 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 they write regularly often. But I just look at it and I think, you know what, firstly, you've looked at that chart, and you, this one here, and you, uh, that one there rather, and you've seen that small little candle, and I'm deeply not convinced by it. This happens to be MediClinic, uh, and if anything, so let's first go down to the red, uh, red circle down at the bottom. We have got histogram turning up. This would be, and if we go back to my CFD trading plan, MediClinic is saying, put me on a watch list to buy. It's not saying to buy it yet. It's saying put on a watch list to buy at some point. You want some confirmation. You want that, the, the, the price to move higher. At this point, and again, this is to close on Friday. I don't know what it did Monday, Tuesday. Uh, the last thing you want to do is buy a stock that is at the lowest level it has been the entire year and maybe longer. That, 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 that really, really is bottom fishing. What we also get up here is some nice confirmation of MACD. So we got the break. Yeah, our MACD was coming down when the break happened. The attempt to recover, the fail, and then the pull away. And there's your MACD cross, sitting perfectly on that red candle there. Which is the break of that red candle there? So you see what we're trying to do to try and, in a sense, bring it together and try and, 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 and more than just the line. Now, in truth, in this example here, uh, on those candles there, probably somewhere here, I probably, if anything, would have been a buyer. Right? It's come back to support. As a rule, support is typically going to hold. The point with trading is it's never a perfect science and we lose plenty enough trades. We get taken to the cleaners plenty enough time. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm deadly, deadly serious. So there is a Twitter account and I couldn't find it. I, I thought I'd they I don't know. But there's a Twitter account that publishes crazy charts. And all they do is they go find other people's charts and publish them. Um, and, and charts that look like that. And that really is noise <laughs> in every sense. Um, I mean, all we learn from that is that cut and paste white lines is really, really easy to do. Now, what the, and, and so what does our brain believe? Our brain believes in complexity, right? Our brain believes add more lines gives more validity, makes the whole thing more important, gives it more credibility. None of that is necessarily true. In fact, I would say all of it is completely untrue. Complexity is not going to work. Um, Karen Richards on Twitter, so you, you won't find simpler charts. So you'll note a couple of things. She'll have a 200-day moving average. She loves that. Uh, she'll often drop to monthly charts, uh, loves those too, um, and will just take a single line. One point Two point, broke. Aspen, be short. Simple as that. 
below your 200. She didn't short the 200. She missed, yeah, I missed all of that. It rallied to 390. Blah, da, 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 da. One point, two point broke. Head and shoulders, yeah, maybe. That's not much of a shoulder unless you completely lopsided. <laughs> but that is, to my mind, the perfect chart. Make no mistake, 300 is a big number in the life of Aspen investors and traders. Firstly, it's a round number, right? And I know, it sounds crazy. But you're going to remember 300 a lot better than you're going to remember 348 rand and 12 cents. Because 300 is just easier to remember. You're going to remember when Aspen went through 300 the first time and how thrillingly exciting that was. And the first time Aspen went down is right over here somewhere, 100 miles ago. When did first break through? Back in 2013 when it broke up for the first time through 300. You're going to remember that. You're also going to very clearly remember the first time it came back down and went down through 300. 300 is an important number. We remember it. It's going to be there. One touch, two touch, close below it. I don't, and again, I'd, so this is actually an old chart from Karen to give her credit. She posted it last week, and I don't know what Aspen has done subsequent. Trading is always simple. We complicate it, right? Because what, did we, what have we always been taught? Pretty much since day one, we've been told that complexity is better, that complexity is about success, that, that success requires hard work and everything else. No. Com uh, success is invariably simplicity. Think about the things that are, are, are booming. I mean, think about Facebook. I mean, in the back end, Facebook is massively complicated. In the front end, what is Facebook? An ability to meet someone who didn't like at school, and now you can not like them as an adult. <laughs> it's brilliant. What more do you, could you possibly want from a social media? Um, hence, I'm not very good on Facebook. You know, I, what, is, what is Uber? Uber is just GPS and billing. You know, the billing code in Uber is eight lines of code. Eight lines of code. That's it. We want complexity. We believe that if you haven't got millions of lines of codes, or in the case of Windows, billions of lines, we've got nothing there. And I appreciate coding's a different kettle of fish in a route. But I, I can remember when I was coding in the late 80s and early 90s, um, and I did it at school, and my teacher, whatever, whenever I submitted a piece of software to him or a piece of coding to him, he wouldn't even look at it. He would go down and see how many lines of code there was, and he says, cool, bring it back next week with half as many lines. And I'm like, no, man, we're trying to make this good. We need to add lines. He says, good is less. Same in trading. Why? Because here's the thing. So, notwithstanding, there's a lot to learn to become a trader. One of the biggest mistakes in trading is that we get into it and it's too easy and we, don't think, we think we don't have to learn anything. There's stuff to learn. Absolutely, there is stuff to learn. But we also come to it and we look at it and we say, yes, this can make us money. Once we've accepted the learning part, we think that the way to beat the market is to outsmart it, is to be complicated, is to make it difficult. That if your chart doesn't confuse the heck out of everybody, it's not going to work. Man, my nephew could have drawn that chart. And that's not dissing car in one iota of being. It's about simplicity. Here's another from her. Jubilee. So this one's a whole lot, a, a whole lot older. Again, she's got her favorite 200 day. Again, one, eh, two, three, and three halves touch points acting as very real support one two coming real as I said if you need a third in my case I would ignore the yellow line that yellow trend line to me is superfluous I think we're overly, overly complicating I would say you know what just focus on that red one for now but we can also see in this point we can see market market psychology what can we see very clearly here that at 60 cents someone is buying this share now, firstly, it's a closing price. So in truth, some days maybe it goes to 58, 57, maybe even 55. But someone out there has an order as of, I mean, since August of last year. Yeah, uh, September of last year. Someone has an order that says this stock, 60 cents, buy it, no questions. And maybe it's more than one person. Maybe it's three or four different. But someone out there, and we can see it with a very simple horizontal line. 60 cents, someone likes it. No bars, no wicks, no candles, just a closing price. 60 is your, is your support. 
you want to be an aggressive trader, you buy it there. The trick is there's also someone out there who's saying, ha ha, this thing's crazy and selling it because every time it rallies, it's coming back. It rallies, it's coming back. And what have we got? A support line, sorry, resistance is not horizontal, it's sloping down, which means broadly sellers are winning. Sellers are winning. If, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if your top line, if your resistance line slopes down, it means that sellers are broadly winning. And if, you're, if your support line is sloping down, it again means that sellers are broadly winning. So if we go back to that one there, we could say, yeah, more or less buyers were winning. And at this point, I wouldn't call them having lost out because there's an obvious parallel line running across there to a degree, not tradable. But you would say in that chart that, yeah, buyers were winning. Uh, in this chart here, we would say buyers were winning and they're no longer winning. And that's a critical point, because where do you want to be? You want to be on the side of the money. And if that money is buying, then you want to be long. And if that money is selling, you want to be short. Our job as a trader is firstly to identify who's winning this fight, buyers or sellers. And secondly, then to identify the opportune moment to enter. You don't want to, in this case uh, of, of MediClinic, buyers are winning and you enter at this point up here. Uh, that's not fun at all. You want to say buyers are winning, wait for the pullbacks, buy the pullbacks. So it is about keeping it very, very simple. I, I always come back to this point. It's never going to be around the complexity. Key points is get a couple of touch points is more important. Try and keep them as horizontal as possible. Not exactly. I mean, we don't need a protractor. In fact, on the platform, IG has a, has a ability to draw a horizontal line. Um, and I don't use it because it's just, uh, there might be a bit of wiggle. You know, if it's not 180, I'm happy with 183 or maybe 176 or something like that. Yeah, my, I'm only borderline OCD. We can have some slippage in that sense there. Um, keep it simple and try and keep those lines as, 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 as horizontal as possible. And breakout. So, when one looks at the concept of trend lines and breakouts, typically they're viewed separately. They're viewed as the idea that breakouts are separate to trend lines, and that's not true at all because breakouts are just trend lines that are broken. The point, as I made earlier, is we're better off buying support, selling resistance, than thinking they're broke. MediClinic broke, absolutely it did. Stocks will break them from some time, and that's when we're going to be wrong. It, it's the, you know, the, the, uh, I'll come to it in a moment. Um, so breakouts are pretty much that. As a rule, I hate trading breakouts. I mean, the way to trade breakouts these days, and I'll show you some examples in a second. The way to trade breakouts is fade them. In other words, always assume a breakout is false. No, so if it breaks to the top, short it. Just assume it's going to be false and short it. And then when it comes back, you make profit. If it breaks out the bottom, fade it. Assume it's going to be false and buy it. Now, I read in, in preparing for this presentation, I was reading an article actually published in 2006, so quite old. The article says, basically saying breakouts used to work, and by used to, they say in the 1980s, but these days breakouts just don't, don't work and just always fade the breakout. Always assume the breakout is going to be fake. It's not going to really, really happen. Go and pick the other side of it. That said, there is a system we have in our boot camp. It's not truly a breakout system, um, but it is there. The link is there, just one laptop.com boot camp. Go look for trading news flow. It's not so much looking for breakouts as it's looking for running breaks. In other words, when a market suddenly runs in a certain direction, uh, and here we're particularly looking for when that happens around a news event, non-farm payroll. So a news event that we are anticipating it coming, not charges being laid or dropped because those we aren't anticipating. But we know that non-farm payroll will be 2.30 on Friday. Cool, so it'll happen. We don't know what it'll be, we don't know if it'll be good or bad, we don't know what the market will say, we wait for the, the, the news to break and we trade that. We trade what the market tells us to. The idea that says there'll be non-farm payroll on Friday and that you know what the non-farm payroll number will be is patently false. Secondly, to say that once you know what the number was, because Janet Yellen phoned you in advance and told you what it would be, even if you know what the number would be, you don't know what the market response will be. And that is critically important. 
As traders, we are not here to predict the market. As traders, we are here to respond to the market. The market says, I'm going up. What is our job? Get in the bus or watch it. If it's going down, you want to be short. If it's going up, you want to be long. And if you can't decide which way it's going, sit in the sidelines until you can decide. We come to trading with the idea that we will predict. We can't. We have, as human beings, exactly zero ability to see into the future. Exactly zero. It has been that, t that, that way since forever. And it's not going to ever change. Our ability to see into the future with all of this technology, weather reports today are no more accurate than they were in 1956 when they used their first computer simulations on weather reporting. So we're not predicting the future. We're looking at a probability and we are responding to what the market is actually doing. The market says I'm going up. Your comment earlier, the market's up today was the craziest thing ever. Agreed. Except what did the market do? Went up. If you wanted to make money today on, on, the, on, on the SA40, you had to be long. Did that make sense? Doesn't matter. It made money. Do you want to be right or do you want to be rich? You can't have both. See, so here's a channel. Uh, so firstly, at this point here, obviously we can't draw the channel. We can only really draw the channel at about this point here. And now we've got a very, very nice channel that's booging along, and this happens to be MTN. Very nice channel that was trading in, nice and simple. This, the trick with channels is, 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 is two problems. Firstly, excuse me, usually by the time we identify them, it's too late to trade. And secondly, often that, that channel width is too small. In this case, the channel width is about 16%. Uh, which means conceivably a trader could expect to take around 8 or 9% of that entire move after costs. It's nice, but it's a little bit tight. I, I, I'm not sure. You know, I know the theory. You know, stock moves 4%, you make money, you're happy. I, I get it. But, you know, you actually want to rather have a stock that moves 10, you know, 20, 30, 40%. You know, we, the big moves is where the, easy, where the big money is made. The 15% the moves. And you'll never catch all 15 So. This range is, I think, 118 to 141, if memory serves. But you're never going to get 118. You're never going to get 141. At this point here, you wouldn't have got filled at 118. You would have got exited. Uh, you got the sales quite nicely. But what we've got here is a very, very clear range. Now, what do we know is going to happen? It's going to break one way or the other. But do we trade the breaks? Well, no, because there was a break and another and two more and another. Uh, and another two, and another one, and another one. And I know I'm being picky here. Some of these breaks are intraday. And then a, a, a real break, and then we went back, <coughs> and now trouble again. Question, is that the kiss of death? In other words, broken, <laughs> come back, and now fading away. Best way to check that? pull a MACD, I'll come and grab a MACD in a bit, we'll go online and I'll pull up a MACD and, and see, see if that is. Uh, but again, to that point, we look at this and we think to ourselves, yo, easy money there. But one, two, I think the earliest we could have drawn these two lines was here. So in fact, there's one short trade down, there's one long trade up and there's one short. And look, that's three trades, except at this point, you're probably long. So you've had three winners and a loser. That's actually a really good win-loss win ratio. That's not shabby at all. But you're here making 8%, 9% on a trade ungeared. I'm not convinced that's the best use of our time, energy, and capital. And I'm not saying there are traders out there who scalp. That's fine. And they make money and they make a living from it. But scalping is hard work. It's a real job. Uh, and then the break. And then again, this is Saturday's chart. Uh, sorry, Friday's close. I don't know where MTN has gone su subsequent. So what we've been looking at there, and I'm, my time is running good, so I'm going to hit onto the IG platform in a moment, and then we will come back with a follow-up and do a whole lot more in that space. We've been looking at completely non-rule-based, in a sense. Uh, there's some rules there, you know, you want three touches, you buy support, sell resistance, that type of thing. But in truth, it really is your ability to draw trend lines. Now, yeah, 
not the hardest thing in the world and as I said up front an easy way to learn go pick the Singapore Stock Exchange or the Swiss or something uh, and go and chart those charts because we have no emotional attachment to what they are but in the sense of a mechanical environment this is almost as far away from mechanical as you can get and then we get the turtles so the turtles were a concept in the 1980s two traders got into a discussion and the question is is trading something that is bought sorry you're born with or is it something that I can teach you and these two guys were debating for years and years whether trading was an, in, an innate skill like an ability to run 100 meters in under 10 seconds or was trading something that we can teach anybody. So what they did was they designed a trading system over many years, which they called the turtle trading system. And they got together a bunch of traders, 12 in total. And they gave them each hard cash and they said, these are the rules, follow the rules, go and make money. And the truth is that of the 12, two followed the rules, and the two who followed the rules made money. Absolutely, they did. The other 10 didn't follow the rules and didn't make money. The, the ultimate outcome of the experiment is, yes, we can teach people to be a trader. That's not the challenge. The challenge is teaching them to be disciplined. That is a whole different kettle of fish. We're teaching them the wrong skill. If the skill we're trying to teach them is to be a trader, Nah, don't worry about it. We need to teach them discipline. And a better way to teach them discipline is probably to make them wake up every morning at 5 o'clock and go for a run. When there's not even zombies in the streets of Johannesburg. <laughs> discipline is what actually makes the trader. So the one chap, and his surname escapes me, Curtis, somebody wrote a book. It's actually a terrible book. Don't buy it. The more importantly, the, so the, the, the turtles are, and there goes back to the 80s. And they've got, no, it's important to know which books not to buy as well as which to buy. Um, and then the turtle system itself, which is, uh, I don't know why it came all funny. It is a complete and absolute, it is a, 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 it is a, a, a breakout, so it is a, a resistance. The, the nutshell of it is, is go back over the previous 22 or 55 bars, whichever system you're using, um, and your bars can be hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, annual, whatever you want. Go back over that, pe that period of bars, and when you get a, a, a close above, so the highest close in 22 periods, buy it, or the lowest close in 22 periods, sell it. But it's everything. It's your position size. It's absolutely everything. And here's the beauty. If you go to, and there's hundreds of downloads, but this is legitimate. A lot of them are fake downloads. You go there and you can download the turtle system. You can also go to other websites and pay two and a half thousand dollars for the, for the turtle system. Uh, trust me, that is the same thing. And in fact, in the introduction, they explain why they're giving it away for free. So the, 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 the people who were involved in the original Turtles back in the 80s, uh, they were sworn to secrecy for a period of 10 years. At the end of the period of 10 years, what some of the guys did was went and sold the system. And the, the other guys were like, nope, that's completely bogus. So they publish it for free. So you can go get the free download, or you can go get the paid download. It's the same thing. It's a complete and absolute mechanical system. It works. There are challenges to it in that it has a win ratio of around 34%. But that's fine because your losers are tiny and your winners are big. Your average winner is uh, five and a half times your average loser. So the fact that you lose two out of three times is fine because you, you make way more. But that was the problem with the system was that the, the folks couldn't take the losses. Although the system said you will lose money, as the guys who were trading it, and, and in fact, I think there was a woman involved as well, uh, 11 men and a woman, <coughs> back in the 80s, were unable to, to take those losses from anyone. It wasn't even their money. They were simply told, here are the rules, follow them 100%. One and a half people followed them 100%. The other ten and a half. So the, the one person uh, followed them for a bunch and then decided to enhance them and in the process of enhancing, broke them. The one guy just followed the rules absolutely perfectly and made money from it. It works. It's real. There's a link. The beauty of it is that it can be programmed into almost anything. You can automate it. So if you've got AMI broker, you can get the AFL code for it. If you've got Metastock, you can get the code for it. Um, you can program it into IG's pro order system as well. This is a, because it's such, the, the thing with trend lines is you can't program trend lines. Because you, look, in time we will be able to, right? There's going to be some little bot 
that when you log on to your IG platform, some bot's going to pop up and say, hello, I'm the IG bot. Where would you like me to draw a trend line today? Um, but right now, we've got to physically do it ourselves. But this is completely and absolutely programmable. I'm not going to delve too much into it because there's a ton of it there. Um, but certainly, if you're looking for the, I, I brought it in this evening because it is, it's breakouts more than it's breakouts into new trends more than uh, 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 you're buying your support and resistance, and it's completely mechanical as distinct from the other side, which is completely unmechanical. Uh, as I said, win loss ratio is horrendous, but it is profitable. So your process is, is exactly the same. This is no different to anything else. There are some tricks, and I'm going to go back to them before we finish. Um, but in your trade thing, the first thing is remove bias. And, and, and the trick, and I know it sounds weird, but trust me, and we were talking before we came on, the ability to hack our brain is immense. The ability to almost remove cognitive bias. We have huge ability to do that. I mean, look what's happening in American politics. I and mean, the stuff that people are believing is insane. And I mean, I mean, I don't know who's right in that story, but half of them are definitely wrong. We just got to decide which half. Or maybe just Americans are wrong. We can do amazing things. We can believe complete and utter nonsense, and we can train our brain. And the point I made right at the beginning, and I repeat it now because it's critically important, you train yourself on charts that you have no connection to. Singapore, Switzerland, I don't know, Chile, whatever, pick a market. Train yourself on charts you don't have any, any and you will, when you draw in those trend lines, you will, f you will sense how you feel, right? We're human beings. You, and then when you go to a chart you do have a f uh, an emotional attachment to, bulletin, Sassel, SA40, whatever, you know, a stock that means something to you. You will feel it when that bias is coming in. Because, put it the other way. When you're doing the anonymous charts, you feel a sense of, and I'm going to use, for want of a better word, a sense of calmness. Not the right word, but play with me here. When you're in the bias chart, you will notice if you don't feel the same calmness. And if you don't feel the same calmness, it's really simple. Stop doing that chart. You've got bias. Stop doing the chart. Go back to the practice. Redo it. Pick a different one. There's some stocks you might just not be able to trade because of, because of bias to it. You know, maybe you, maybe you work for a listed company. Maybe you were fired from a listed company. If you work for them, man, you love this. This is the best company in the world. If they fired you, this thing is going so bust, there is no tomorrow. Don't trade it. You know, maybe your ex-partner works for that company. Or maybe they fired your ex-partner. They're going to be, re there's nothing wrong. There are 400 plus stocks in our market, right? We need to trade a handful. If you've got some cognitive bias towards a particular stop, stock, walk away. I mean, my cognitive bias is simple, right? Gold stocks. So what happens this year? I get into gold stocks. Two things happen. Firstly, I'm making money, which deeply distresses me. Now I'm losing money, which deeply distresses me. Really, really simple. No more gold stocks in my life. We haven't touched on stop losses yet. Because stop losses are what they always are. Stop losses are, are the same sort of processes. Um, if you're buying off support, you put it below. If you're selling off resistance, you put it above. The, the trick, and, and we've got entire uh, sessions on stop losses. Uh, video 12 in the bootcamp series was around risk and stop loss. The key point with stop losses is that what we typically do as a trader or a newbie trader is we put them too close. We put a stop loss too close. You buy an equity and you put a stop loss two, three, four percent away from your entry. It's never going to work. <clears throat> Look at what our shares do on any one given day. You know, a, a share that's going up like a steam train can reverse three or four or five or six percent. Of course it can. That's not a reversal. It's just a breather within the bigger picture. To my mind, if you're in equity, you need stop losses of 8 to 10%. And you manage that with your, with your 1 or 2% rule. We talk about that in the second video in the boot camp. We manage it there. But in equity, I'm, you need 8 or 10% because stocks can move. And a stock that goes 5 or 6% against your position has not necessarily reversed. There might just be a seller in the market or a buyer if you're short. The reason we hate stop losses and we want to make them really, really tight is because we want to limit our loss and maximize our profit. But if we use proper risk management, it doesn't matter whether your stop loss is 1% or 50%, your risk in the trade is going to be exactly the same, so no problem whatsoever. 
I want to go back to, uh, there must be an easier way to get around. I think a key point is free touch. You really want three, three touches. My next key point is it's best fit. We don't have to be exotic. Use uh, closing prices on the long terms and then. So I'm going to preface this by saying, as always, so I already, why do I have lines on Aspen? Oh, that's right. Uh, so drawings, delete all, delete all. Uh, Okay, so we're in a daily chart, all is good. Uh, close today was 290, so so far Karen has been really smart in that sense. My first thought is I want more data from there. Um, and I'm going to say, the, 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 I, mean, I wouldn't even know where to start putting a line here, and, I, and I, I can get fancy. So do we put lines around there? Yeah, but that's retrofitting around there. No, no. Okay, so we've got a top on Aspen. 380 is your resistance. I mean, so we can, we can start getting fun. So let's do some point to points. Um, sweet, tells us nothing. Um, oh, hey, what about this? That looks like fun. There we go, on support. Shouldn't we all go and buy it? The, to my mind, the only real line that we can get here, aside from the one which Corin was doing, which was the 300, which is now triggered, really is a case of there is resistance up at around the 380 zone. Other than that, one I was looking at earlier today, which interests me, because I have enough shares to almost get a seat on the board, Sassel. <coughs> well, because every time it goes down, it, 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 I buy some more and then... Hey, I'll have you know my average price on Sasso is 111 Rand. Only because I'm older than most of you. <laughs> and I was buying Sasso before you'd heard of JSCs. So the obvious on Sasso, and I'm just trying to crimp it because I don't want all of that noise over there. Someone said it already. Sasso is the easiest trade in the world right now. And it probably won't be as soon as we all leave here today. 360. One, two, three, 360. You buy it. Uh, where do you sell it? I don't know, 420, 440. But certainly on Sasol, currently 360 is where you buy it. Every time it comes back to 360. Yeah. So I, the, the session next, next month, December, is on moving averages without a shadow of a doubt my preference. Um, I use trend lines in one place for my long-term portfolio. Those 578 gabillion Sasso shares that I own that's going to get me a seat on the board, um, those are not geared. Those are long-term long -term buy and holds. I believe in Sasso as a company. I like it as a company. I think it has a lot of prospects to it. Um, I have, I forget what my price earnings price target is or, or buy zone is. It's around 400. Um, but Sasso at 360 is, and if I, it is, is, is my point there. So I'm using it more for, for, for long term. Because it, it's that subjectivity. And what is, the, what is the weakest link in my trading? It's me. It's me doing stupid stuff. It's me looking at a chart and deciding I should buy it because someone on TV said I should. Um, or, or, you know, and I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, been there before, done that, and, and I'm sometimes that oak on TV. Um, but I mean, here's our top 40. So what is top 40 doing? That's not an unreasonable line. One, two, three, four, and then back today, five. One close, two close, a lot of touch points to it. Um, on my top side, Um, and these are just daily charts. I'm not getting anything fancy here. I'm not going for, for, for longer time horizons or uh, shorter time horizons. Uh, ishish. I mean, ishish. I'm, I'm not convinced about that top one. Um, but there's more supports we can draw in here as well. Hey, we can come from... Uh, and now you see the rabbit hole. We can start going down, hey? Uh, and I'm going to make that rabbit hole a little wider. Let's go back so for the entire time that we've been going sideways. 
Okay, so do I buy it now or do I wait for it to drop another 1,800 points and buy it there? Um, what about if I put... Oh, look at that. They match up. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that exciting? No, it's not. <laughs> the only thing that matched those two points there? Me. Mm. And you note, as soon as I saw it, how excited I got that something was matching. So here's the question. To your point, which one? The short answer is is that if you are a trader, you're taking trades, right? So you say to yourself, this line, the short line there is going to hold, ergo, and this is IG, so it's live. As we speak, it's trading right now because it's a 24-hour market. Uh, right now, you go long. And in fact, we can see if we zoom in uh, a little bit of a bounce, and we say that support line is saying buy it. And you know what? What is trading? Trading is dipping your toe in the, in the market and seeing if you're wrong. And if you are wrong, no problem. You take your toe away and hopefully it's all still there because you had a stop loss in place. And if you're right, the market gives you money. Mark Douglas, we we're talking about him earlier. Mark Douglas used the analogy. Let's say, you've, let's say you're doing a trade and let's say your stop loss, if you lose on this trade, this, the, the cost of money, the amount of money you will lose is let's say a thousand rand. Okay, you buy for 10, you sell at 9, you've lost a 1,000 bucks. Mark Douglas says, take that 1,000 Rand and view it as the price it is to enter the trade. There's an entry ticket to this trade. It's a 1,000 Rand because that's what you can lose because you are a disciplined trader. You use the guaranteed stop on the IG platform. 1,000 Rand's all you can lose. That is the price that you pay. And the more often you play, the more often you're likely to be right, as long as you have some semblance of sense to it. I mean, if you're just tossing coins, then no. Actually, Van Tharp even made money tossing coins, but let's not go down that road right now. It's a thousand rand to play. So what do you do? You enter at this point here because there is a quite variable realistic and it's a three, four point, so it's not a bad. And you put your thousand rand in and if you're wrong, well, then you're wrong. You know what? And then you wait and you've got another line down there at 43 or 42.8, whatever it is. Trading is about you paying the thousand rand ticket to partake. At the end of, the, of that particular trade, one of two things happens. Nothing. In other words, you're out of the trade and you've got no money, so you paid a thousand rand and it wasn't a very good movie. On the flip side is that at the end of the trade, you've got some money back. Maybe you got back 800 rand. You still lost money. But maybe you got back 1800 or 1,500, or 3,000, or, I and mean, it's not unlimited, but it can be a bigger number. And just view that 1,000 Rand as this is what it costs me to play. And if you've only got 2,000 Rand, and your cost of play is 1,000 Rand, well, then of course you're going to be scared, and of course you're going to lose your money. But if you're running a 2% a, 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 a risk rule, and you've got 50,000, and your risk is 1, it's not scary. You're going to lose, it, you know, you're going to lose you know, 2% or 1% of your capital. That's not a scary thing at all, which is why the risk management part is so common. That's why I agree with you 100%. Trend lines, hey, subjective as all hell. I won't do it. Yeah. I don't either, but I tell you what, me and you, we're in the minority. <laughs> no. But the thing being is, whatever you do, whether it be, I mean, there's Oaks out there who do Elliott Wave and Fibonacci's, man, and that's got to be the craziest stuff ever. I mean, Fibonacci's was some drunk Italian in the 1600s, man, come on. <laughs> they didn't have stock market, well, they probably did, but they certainly didn't have charts and computers in the 1600s. But there's Oaks out there who traded and make money. Why? Because all you're trying to do is saying, I think probability is maybe it's going to go that way, and my cost to find out is a thousand rand, and that's quite cheap. And that's all your trading is. The super duper ability to draw trend lines? Not convinced. Anyone got another stock for me? Breit. Breit. I'm feeling brave because I own Breit and I haven't looked at it in a long time. And then we'll look at Anglo. Well, the six year old test says it's going low. So I'm going to be nasty and take it all the way back to 2014. Cool. <laughs> um, there is no conceivable place that, I mean, I look at that and I don't see a line, and, and maybe you folks do. Um, there's an obvious one up there, and that's great, it's hindsight. Um, we can do some, I mean, where am I going to draw my point now? I mean, really, where am I going to, I mean, I mean, really? No, man, that's, uh, the, the, 
there's two, there's two positions to have in Brait right now, and I have neither of them. The two positions of Brait are to be out or short. Out or short. If you are long or Brait, it's hurting. Don't worry, I'm long or Brait. My momentum system put me in, oh, I don't know, somewhere up in the toppy part of this little... I, don't, I didn't want to look at that chart. Yerkes made me look at it. Anglo. There's a chart I have no interest in. Anglo-American PLC, Anglo-American... Where's Anglo-American czar? Folks, I'm going to cut it from here because I've just noticed I've run my time. I'm going to, we, we, we come back for the live webcast, we'll, we'll do this. We're just going to go through and, and look at different things. And one of the key points is, is that sometimes you look at a chart like Braid and it's like, there's nothing that I can draw here that makes sense. In which case, walk away. You know, the top 40, when I looked at it, there was an obvious place to put a line. Is it the right line? Yeah. We'll find out in time. But there was an obvious place to draw it. Hold up, Bray. Apart from the pain in my gut, there was no obvious place to draw a line. So don't start saying, well, we can. No, no, no. There's no place to draw a line. Anglo. Let's zoom out. I could be nasty to you and zoom all the way back to 2008, but that's just not fair. Uh, so it's going up, right? That's the obvious answer. First rule of thought. So there was a, and that's now long busted. Uh, we've got a bit of support there. Don't like that line. Um, there's one that kind of makes sense to me there. Let me delete that one. Let me delete that one. Um, I would say that is a reasonable-ish. And let's zoom in. Okay, it's a messy line. Uh, let me delete it and make a prettier one. Anglos is going up. That we know for, 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 for a fact. We can see that as of February where it was 60. It's now 180. Uh, the fact that it's up 300%, neither here nor there. You know, Capitec is up 7,000% from when it listed. Um, Nespas probably 300 billion thousand percent um, and there's your support currently if it pulls back to the 170 level it's on the support line and there's a place to be jumping in and most importantly keeping it really really simple ladies and gents I'm going to park it there I need to go to That part there, uh, as always, run the demos. I'm, I'm deadly serious. I know I'm saying this for the third time this evening, even after I've run my time. Go and practice on sharks you have no emotional response to, because then when you feel that emotional response, you will notice it, and you will know that you are retrofitting and that you are, if anything, hurting. Don't at all be afraid to jump in with us and to say this whole trend line and support and stuff looks like hard work. Um, there's many ways to trade, and this is but one of them. For me, it's moving averages and or price exclusively. Um, but there are folks out there, and, and Corin Richards was an example I showed you, who does very, very well using trend lines, and so it's not completely mugs game. Uh, we're back on the 17th for the live webcast, and then we're back early December, and then 14 December for that follow-up, and then it is officially uh, the end of the year. Ladies and gents, thank you very much for your time this evening. <laughs>